share a little bit about their farm or ranch operation and share with us the, the opportunities and challenges that they see in bringing locally grown or raised food to market. Yeah, my name is Don Spencer, and uh, I don't know how y'all managed to do this, but Mr. Range and Mr. Fudge uh, actually kind of laid the precursor for where I am today. What they've just described actually uh, is the same thing that affected my family. Uh, actually, five generations of my family called Madison County and, and Eastern Limestone County home. Uh, I'm currently uh, a real estate developer on a real estate company because a lot of our family farmland just became uh, too highly had too high a potential for development to continue to grow crop in order to farm it. So we've lost a lot of, uh, uh, down we have a little over a thousand acres of land. And my family became the same victims. Uh, my grandfather and great grandfather got out of farming in 1974. Uh, in 74, when the markets began to turn and the get big or get out mentality started uh, prevailing, uh, there was really no choice. And, and of course, as a kid, I was heartbroken to see all, all the uh, see the auctioneer coming and get rid of all the equipment that I grew up playing on and uh, fortunately we were able to still hold on to the majority of our land to uh, share rent with other farmers that didn't own land. Uh, uh, we do still have a couple of hundred acres of production land still in production in row crops and commodity crops growing cotton, beans, wheat, corn. Through the Bull Weevil Eradication Program I interacted with every farmer in Madison, Limestone, and Middleton, Madison, Limestone counties and three counties in Middle Tennessee, uh, I saw evidence of subsidy farming and, and just exactly what Mr. Rain said, that people that were just planting crops for no other reason that if it failed, you still get your subsidy. And uh, got involved with this with Food Policy Council uh, early on, but wasn't able to interact as much as I wanted to, but I felt, one, that the Food Policy Council was, was a very important uh, idea in doing what we all do as far as trying to reestablish local markets for everything that we can produce. So I started slowly trying to figure out a way to let's put some of this cropland that we still have that's not in, in the gun sites of a, of a residential development somewhere <clears throat> and start trying to produce food. In limestone, you know, Madison and Limestone County are two of the biggest agricultural producing counties in the state of Alabama. Uh, you know, the, but it's primarily commodity crops, the corn, wheat, and wheat, and cotton. Uh, we've got a lot of opportunities, in, especially in Limestone County, for irrigatable land. Uh, and I had seen some, some, some data at one time about even though we have one of the highest average rainfalls and one of the most fertile farming areas in the country, we still have crop failures year after year. As I started looking at what I could do to try to capitalize on one need for locally grown products. Uh, we have a prime location out in Limestone, in South Limestone County. I started putting the numbers together on, just doing simple math on, on yields and, and started doing the research on growing the locally grown, you know, the regular the, the table fare that we would grow in our gardens. Uh, the things that you buy at the farmer's market. And one, I started realizing really very difficult to make any kind of profit in that. One is labor intensive. That is one of the biggest challenges that food production, when we're talking about produce, it is the labor cost. Nothing picks up the tomato like a human hand at that, that are really labor intensive harvesting measures. You know, they struggle and they struggle with getting enough help in. Uh, we now have a new immigration law that's making that even more difficult activity in the smaller farmers that have 10 or 15 acres or just a small, even a, even a man that's you know, got a two acre backyard can, can make a little extra cash if he has a place to sell his product. That's the bottom line. Nobody does it because we to sell it to people. Our goal is to plant a place where we can start creating markets uh, and promoting agritourism. Uh, we're going to probably do some things with the land trust and, and really trying to establish an area, you know, a, a, basically a regional area where people can come and learn about 